Hello everyone. So today I want to speak. I want to show you uh, how to use certification in uh, HyperMesh. And before going to the certification, uh, let's give a bit of context about what is certification uh, and uh, why we brought it in. So certification is really a new framework which is available, a post-processing framework which is available within HyperMesh, in order to apply some specific computation methods uh, depending on your standards. So let's pick an example. Let's switch back to Hyperview. Here I have a model with um, some nominal load cases and some derived load cases. And I have some formulas which I want to compute. And let's give an example here. I have this formula with a maximum load case. I want to look for the maximum load case, sorry, over um, all my derived load cases. I want to look at the, so this will be my P1, just to make it clear. Uh, this will be my P3 over, so the minimum P3 over all my load cases. So then I want to do a mean stress, um, which is an average stress of the sum of both divided by two. I want an alternating stress, which is the absolute value of the difference divided by two. And from this, I get a match of safety, uh, which can be considered also, uh, uh, for which can be considered for fatigue analysis. And I have some information coming from the material, the yield strength, the endurance, and the reduction factor. As a first remark, um, please note that for safety, uh, for fatigue purpose, if you really need to go for fatigue purpose, we have from version 2020, if I remember well, we have Hyperlife, which is a, really our post-processing environment dedicated for fatigue, which, intro, which includes already a lot of um, standardized computation. So if your intent is to compute some fatigue results, please have a look first at uh, Hyperlife. And for other computation now, let's come back to certification. So trying to do this in Hyperview was uh, complex because you had to define your derived load cases, define the envelopes, uh, getting the information. Uh, this um, sometimes required some uh, effort to set up. Now, uh, again, we brought in HyperMesh, uh, and I purposely say HyperMesh because we have also reintroduced post-processing capabilities in HyperMesh. They were there at the beginning, uh, up to version 7. We moved, especially for implicit analysis, the post-processing capabilities back. And for setting up this computation, we we'll used two ribbons. The first one is a post to get access to the results and set up the derived results. And then we'll use a certification to set uh, the methods. Let's have a look first at the post. Uh, so right now, the only thing that I have in my model is uh, my FE model. And so the first step is to load my result file. So I will go to the post ribbon. And the result I hit on the plus. And I can pick one of my H3D. So here now you see that I have my results available with a list of my subcases. From there, I will click on this derived load case icon and I will define my different um, derived load cases. So let me extend a little bit. Three, two, let me create randomly some derived load cases. Uh, this is will be my first one. Um, so three, uh, or minus three, two, one, for instance, create, and let me create a third one, minus three, two, and one, for instance, create. Close. So now I have my derived plot cases, um, so I can switch to my uh, certification. And even before switching to the certification, um, let's take again a look at this Excel sheet, look uh, back at what we need. We need the information from the stress coming from the results. So here 
we have defined the load cases. We will have to uh, extract them from the results. We will need the yield strengths, which can be found in the material itself. And we have some extra values, which are generally not necessarily into the Optistruct, Abacus, uh, and SysDeck, which are the endurance limit and the reduction factor. And last but not least, we need a way to integrate this formula inside uh, Hypermesh and to take this one, two, three, four, five inputs. So the two blue inputs coming from the result extractions, uh, where could we, uh, how, how could we push information about the yield strength, the endurance limit, and the reduction factor? For this, let me switch to the uh, model tab, and I will double click on the materials here. I already double clicked on it, so you have this tab now. And let me pick the three of them, and I will add the first one I, that I will add is um, this ST. If you go on it, stress limit in tension, compression, and shear. Um, it could be used at least for composite, but we'll use it here. So let me right click here, add column. And here I can define, for instance, on the fly, um, two values. And the next step is uh, that I will add some metadata. So I will add a metadata which, will, which I'll call endurance, uh, which is with a value of 40. Okay, and I will add the second metadata, which is uh, reduction factor. Reduction factor which, uh, with a value of three. Apply, okay. So here I have my two metadata, and again, if I want, if I have to deal with multiple material, the best way to do it is to add the columns so that you just have to go there and say, for instance, this one should be 35, this one should be 35 too, uh, or more likely, it should have the 40, 40. Um, here I will say 2.2, or two, let's say, or 3, because it's the same values, and this one will be 2. So now that we have the material inputs, uh, let's go to certification. Uh, in order to see how we can call the method and for the function and how to call the arguments. So, as you can see, certification, you have many tools. In fact, this certification is intended to uh, not think at the FE element level, but at what we call the structural property. So, let's say you're dealing with an aerospace or marine model and you want to look at a door or any panel. Uh, you, we have this panel uh, structural property. We have the beam also, so it can be uh, multiple uh, 1D beam corresponding to one physical beam in the reality. Same for rivets, same for springs, and we have the generic. So first step uh, is to register the method into the Python script uh, that we had here into Hypermesh. So for this, let's go to method. You see this GUI with two um, tabs, the first one libraries, the second resources. By default, oh, no, but not by default, on my computer, I have already registered uh, some of my compose functions, and you see that the MS fatigue is already registered. To do it, you just have to hit on the plus and say which file you want to, to add. It can be a compose, Python, TCL, or a DLL. And once my resource is available, I, can, I will be able to save it into a library. So it can be only in my current session, um, but if you want to leverage it, somehow it is better that you create your own library. So let's call it my uh, standard computation. that you will save. So I will um, save it 
a uh, WT across uh, certification and voila, oh, my computation method. I could have used the same and then it's available there. And from there, you can say right click on it, add method. So you will be able to pick your compose, uh, your method, sorry, which will be, let's call it um, MOS for margin of safety. You want it to be from Python and you want your MS fatigue. So now you have access to your inputs and you see that you retrieve the five arguments max p1, min p3, ys, endurance, and rf. So let's go for max p1. I want to extract it from the results here. Stress, stress, principle, p1, double, sorry, uh, results, uh, my double click brought me somewhere I was not expecting. So double click P1. I want the max of load cases here. I want P3, the mean of all the load cases. For YS, it's in the attributes of MAT1. So I should be able to retrieve it through model, material properties, isotropic, and I want the tensile allowable. Oh, sorry, tensile allowable. Here, min P3, I did something wrong. I wanted to go too fast. My apologies, uh, P3. And so coming to endurance, this will be a metadata. So I need to say it comes from a material. I need to say that to state the name, and you have to make sure it is the same name that in endurance here, and 40. Ah. Uh, why it is not hitting 14. This will be the default value in case the value is not filled in. And I want the RF, which will be again selected from material reduction factor. And if not available or not existing, uh, I will set a default value from three. So this is for my inputs and I need to define at least one output, which will be my margin of safety. So do not forget to, to define this margin of safety. Uh, you can check it, but yeah, save, yes. So now my method is available, is filled in, and what I need to do as a last step from this GUI is to check it and ask for creating it. And if you go to the model browser, you will see that you have this design point method. So now I can run it and uh, either I need to create design point sets or I can even go from elements. So for this one, I can directly select the elements. I can select my method. Okay. I need to select my load cases. And I will define, select my three derived load cases and I will hit on run method. No error, no warning, the method is successful. I can see using this small output router here that I have access to this table with tabular data. So you can see the different value, stress P1, stress P3 for each element, uh, tensile stress limit endurance reduction factor and the value of the margin of safety. And then if you want to contour it, you just have to select, um, as you didn't define design point set, you need to define the design, to select the design point method. So MEA, MOS, okay, hit on play. And here, make sure to select the margin of safety and apply. Okay, so I was better, I have a better combination of derived lot case earlier because I had something more interesting as a matter of results. So I did try to play a little bit with my derived load steps, but um, the result on this model um, with no real life, let's say, load, uh, load case is not great from a 
visualization, just from a visualization point of view, I would like to see a kind of gradient, but anyhow. Uh, what I want to show you to, to conclude this video is how to deal with the design sets. So in this model, um, as we are dealing with, if you look at elements and you look at by config, you will say that we have both 2D, C3 and C quad and solid 3D elements, C Panta, C Exa. So if I go for panels, for instance, I will get panels only for uh, the 2D elements. If I'm interested in having the results for all my entities, what I need to do is to go for generic. Here I need to select my elements and I will hit and play. So it creates me a design point set with one design point, one single design point for all my elements. And then I can apply these design point sets to one method, which is my margin of safety, play. And then in the run method, what I can say, instead of selecting my elements, I can select my design point sets, my method, still the load case. Uh, with the three load cases I'm interested in. Play. So it will create me a new table and I can contour it again and seeing this time the design point set, I can take my design point set, okay, and validate and margin of safety apply. So you get approximately the same results. If you're dealing with a mix of elements that has no real added value of using the design point sets, but if you're in, interested in some specific elements, either um, to the elements uh, um, gathered, to, to gathered for setting a panel or a beam element gathered together for representing a structural beam uh, part, then it's, uh, it's better that you use the design points and design point sets. So I hope this video helps you have a better understanding of uh, certification. See you later for another video. Goodbye, everyone.